Hey everybody, welcome back to episode two of Sold As Is, where we're gonna go over what to do with your lazy equity. All right, hey, thanks for tuning back into our podcast. Hey Matt, you and I, on our last conversation, we were talking about uh, high interest rates, inflation, even some gas prices, Mm -hmm. and how real estate is really a great vehicle to hedge against inflation. And we're now getting some good conversation and feedback back from our clients and sphere of influence on realizing that they've got this lazy equity in their properties and they wanted to put it to good use. So I know you and I have been at the drawing board working on this stuff. So what what are we talking about? Yeah, I mean, uh, so after that, yeah, a lot of people were reaching out and what we were thinking of us, what, what, you know, what can we offer? What can we do? So we, we've been reaching out to the real estate community and what we kind of landed on was finding, you know, turnkey products, right? right. Homes that are already rehabbed. They're already um, in good areas. They're, they're already being rented and um, they're, they're good avenues. They're good investments for our potential clients. Yeah. I mean, in, in doing this research, there's a lot of good investors out there that are doing this. There's some real estate agents, and it's really about us just kind of connecting with them right mm-hmm. now to make sure that we got some good product to offer our clients. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, let, don't get me wrong; they're not going to be in the quote unquote sexiest, you know, yeah. areas. They're not Florida. They're not um, San Francisco. They're not you know Miami, tech, Miami Texas, things like that. Yeah. Um, but they are in kind of areas that have low value, low land value, but inflated rents, which right. is essentially going to give us. Um, a great opportunity for everybody to get into these sleepy areas yeah. that you know offer you know good bang for your buck. Yeah, I agree because I think as we're looking, we're finding that there's a lot of investors out there that that don't want to be property managers, right? Yeah, they want to, they just want to cash the check, I guess you could say, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. So I think that's really good, and that we can team up with these other investors and these other real estate agents to really give our clients some good product. Yeah. What are um What are we looking for? What did What did we What did we find that are are the good properties? I know that I know we're working with or connecting with people in Kansas, Missouri, Alabama. We're working with areas of northwest uh, Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. So these are going to be some areas that have a lot of potential growth. Um, as far as like cap rates, you want to t- dig into well, that? Well, I mean, I think the old golden rule was the 1%. You yeah. know, for every $100,000 that you borrowed, you got $1,000 a month in rent. And we're finding that that's... That's not anywhere it's in the not, United States not, right now, right? It's not quite there. However, um, there is about 0.9%. Point so you you can see for every $100,000 that you do invest, you can see about 900 to 850 right. somewhere like that in cash flow. Yeah. And I think the ease for this, for a lot of people that are out there that are might be you know professionals that don't want to deal with property management or don't want to deal with finding a, uh, uh, a contractor, because like you know we were talking about, a realtor comes in, you buy them, a, if they can get you the deal, yeah. they hand you the keys and then they're, they're gone. The they leave you at the altar, <laughs> as Matt likes yeah. to say. And we're really working to put those services also on the table for yeah. these people. Well, yeah? not, not only that, but you got to look for construction. You know, you got to find find a renter, you know, get a, get property management, all that stuff. Right. You know, so and, you you know, you knock out maybe two or three of those and you're just pulling your hair out thinking like, man, real estate's not for me. It's a nightmare. How yeah. am I going to do all this on your own? So finding a turnkey product, like I was saying at the beginning, is something to where you can just say, hey, I'm in. Yeah. You know, where do I sign? Where, where's the property at? Yeah. Where do I send my check? Where do I send my check or yeah. where do I deposit my money? Um, and we've really, you know, we're partnering with the experts in the area. They know yeah. what street, they know what paint, they know what, you know, everything to do in it to make it as turnkey and ready for you as possible. Yeah. It's interesting how through adversity in a shifting market like this, um, someone who's been in the business as long as I have uh, is finding new ways to bring value to my client. I mean, we're kind of thinking like, where has this, I'm sure this opportunity has always been there. But, you know, you get focused in on other things in real estate and you don't realize there's some other great opportunities out there until adversity hits. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, you're right. You know, um, you know, one of one of the you know, the things that I wanted to also talk to talk about is, um, you know, getting in the, in these properties because anybody can buy a property. Are there any caveats to, you know, doing it on your own as far as like cash flow killers that? Yeah, that we've identified. I mean, I think we found that obviously vacancy mm-hmm. is going to be a big issue with a lot of these properties and then the maintenance, maintenance. you know, if these properties are out of state. Uh, I can't get my handyman out there easily. So right. uh, making sure for us as agents and giving our clients service is making sure that these things are also in place for them as well. 
Right. And then I think we're also learning that the more properties people acquire, uh, they're able to leverage that expense of those vacancies and those maintenance onto their other properties as well. So if you're holding nine or 10 or 15 rental properties and one goes vacant, you're not necessarily suffering as bad right. because you've got income coming in from these other ones. So in the beginning, they might be a little bit of a struggle in there during these hard times. But I think what we're finding out is as us as realtors and being able to provide services to kind of minimize that and already foresee that so that we've got people in play for that for yeah. them. All right, guys. Hey, so let's recap what Matt and I have been talking about, right? Yeah. It's really talking about inflation and using real estate, that lazy equity that you have as a hedge against inflation. And how are we doing that? We're going to help you go out and buy some investment properties in some out-of-state areas where the uh, land is cheap, but the rents are high. If anything in here caught your eye and you're ready to make a move or you want to learn a little bit more about what we're talking about and get your money to work, we'd love to have a conversation with you guys. So link's going to be down below and we can't wait to see you on the next episode, guys. Absolutely. Episode three coming your way. Absolutely.